Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? Here on Behind the Star, we share stories about the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Central Florida's largest law enforcement agency. From forensics to dispatch to the deputies on patrol, we'll talk to the brave men and women who protect our community. This is Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. My name is John Bustegger, your host here at Behind the Star, and we're talking sports here on this episode of Behind the Star. You probably don't know about this, but maybe you do. We have something called the Orange County Police Athletic League, and I got two folks from Orange County, pal for short. I got Deputy Sean Randall and Deputy Maurice Crum. Welcome to Behind the Star. Nice to be here. Nice to be here as well. All right. So as I said, we're talking sports. And uh, Maurice, why don't you tell me what exactly is pal? What is the Orange County Police Athletic League? Yes, yeah, so Orange County Police Athletic League, like you said, which stands for pal. We uh, go to different middle schools around Orange County and do before school and after school programs. And it's basically to keep the kids off the streets and busy before and after school instead of out doing mischief and creating bad situations in neighborhood. And we've been quite successful for some time. So you say some time. Can you give me any history on this? Do you know sort of how long it's been going on? Uh, and- uh, we started, pal, around 92 1992. Uh, uh, not 1892. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I came on, I think, 2003, four. Okay. 2004. So I've been in PAL since then. Um, and it started on the east side of Orange County. Uh, when I came on, we ventured over to the west side of Orange County. And we just grew since then. And so, and so Sean, tell me, what sports do you play? So I play basketball. Okay. Well, you I, play basketball. I but, play but. <laughs> basketball, but for police athletically, we typically try to stay around soccer, flag football, basketball. We have done volleyball in the past, um, and we're trying to venture out to other sports right now, but so far that's where we're at. So so how does it work? Let's say I'm in, uh, you said middle school, right? Middle it's school. Correct. Middle school. Mm-hmm. I'm in middle school. I go to a school here in Orange County. It's not all schools, correct? It, it's just certain schools in the county. Yeah, mm-hmm. certain schools. Orange County's school so where our orange county deputies are is where we typically try to um at uh, target but it's not every single school in the county no, no it's not no we try to stay in the high crime corridor areas okay all right so so certain sports at certain schools how does it work do i play before school is it after school like how, how does it all work depends like we try to talk to the principals and ask the principals like when do you really need us some schools they fight before school a lot of kids uh get dropped off early so there's a lot of things that they're doing that they should not be. So they would like for us to come in the morning. Um, But then typically we like to come in the evening times because that's when you have a lot of your fights after school as well. So it gives them something to do. Okay, so so I'm I'm in middle school. Mm-hmm. I want to play in in PAL. What do I do? Do I just show up and sign up? Is there a cost associated with it? Is it a, a different sport every season? Like 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 talk to me about that. Well, the cost is now either five or ten dollars. Okay, uh, all right. Based on the time of season, and if it's a kid who has financial difficulties, by all means, he's more than welcome to still play. Okay. Uh, so that that varies, but we put out flyers and forms at the school. We go to different lunches. Um, hand out flyers if the kids want to participate. We have a start date and an end date. And if they fill out the form and the parents sign, we're good to go. So, so Sean, before we started, you had mentioned, I think you, you're at a school this afternoon playing football. Is it football season right now, or do you play basketball as well? Or is so it it's flag football season. We try to uh, coordinate between their sports. So if their sports is indoors, then we're outdoors. And if their sports are outdoors, like soccer, then we're indoors. So right now, we're in a season of flag football. Okay. So so the kids playing flag football, we'll just take that as an example. Like, like who are the kids? Are they, are they kids that normally play football, like like football? Full contact football, and this is something they do in the off season, or maybe are these kids that don't play sports like like organized sports through another league, and they play pal. Like who's the kids? It's some of both, um, and it's a way for those kids who the sixth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, if they don't generally play anything and want to learn, but they just been afraid to go out and try it. They have a friend who's playing, and they'll come out and play and see how it goes, and that's the place to do it because everyone plays that excellent player he don't play the whole time he has a sub just like everyone else Mm -hmm. so we get an equal amount of playing time and that way 
they generally learn the sport and see if they, you know, can do it. And some kids, they just want to come out of that shell, mm -hmm. and that gives them that time to do it. So, so Sean, when you're out there, are are you the referee? Are you the coach? Like, oh, like man. what's your job? <laughs> All around. So I'm the referee. I'm the coach. Um, I'm everything. We set up the fields when Organize we get out the there. <laughs> yeah, we set up the fields when we get out there. And um, like yesterday, I had a player that, that came out as a young lady. Um, and she said, um, can you explain to me how to play flag football? She said, I'm going to be honest with you. My dad sent me out here and he said, I have to be out here. Um, but she didn't know what defense was. She didn't know what offense was. So as I'm roughing the game, I'm teaching her at how to play flag football as well. And that's tough because I assume like, like you two, you've played sports probably your whole lives and, mm -hmm. and you know the rules. And, and like you said, you're a referee or a coach, <laughs> but there are kids that they just, they don't know the rules that's of football. Right. They don't know the rules of basketball and and when you sign up for a sport typically in an organized league you probably know a little bit right, but if you're right. playing and, and pal you might not know anything but that's good because you're getting them interested right right getting them interested keeping them out of trouble i mean she, i think she said she was a dancer um, and so she was stepping out of her comfort zone, and that's what I like to see. You can tell her that when Barry Sanders was a football player, he took ball ballet lessons so he could be a better <laughs> runner. Right? So there you go. A lot of them do that. So so when that. you go around and you and you go to the, the lunches before and after school and say, hey, we have this league, it's Orange County Pal, do they know that you are both deputies and work in law enforcement like the kids? Yeah. Some of them do at first and some of them don't, but – uh, we generally wear some type of uniform. We go on campus, so they see that we, we are deputies, and we explain to them the stuff that we do, and, and we kind of bridge that gap between, the, you know, the officers and kids, uh, some of the ones who don't like us, some of the ones that do like us. That's the way we bridge that gap, and they see that we're not always just arresting kids or talking to a kid when he's in trouble. You know, we want the good side and the bad side of them. Do, do you get kids that say, well, I don't want to play in that league because you guys are cops? Um, typically we don't because we have a lot of kids already that has a, has a rapport with us. So mm -hmm. when they see us talking to their friends, then they're interested and they come over and talk to us as well. Um, I'm sure we do have some kids that really don't want to mess with us, but then as soon as we start talking trash to them, <laughs> then they talk trash to us. And then it's like, we all friends now. <laughs> so Maurice, you, I, I, I want to get to you, Sean, but uh -huh. Maurice, you have a background in playing football. Yes. Tell me about that before though. you became a deputy. Before I became a deputy, uh, and it's how I actually became a deputy, through football, uh, I was playing sports. I went to the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. And from Miami, I was in Tampa for a year and Dallas for a year. And after that – And you played football at the University of Miami. You didn't yes. just go to the University of Miami. Right. I okay. played football right. I want to make, make that clear. <laughs> yes, I played football <laughs> and baseball at Miami. All right. After I – Got with Dallas, they put me in the World League, mm -hmm. and I played the World League. And from the and World League, I was here in Orlando, which actually put me in Orlando for the first time. And that was the Orlando Thunder. I played with them for two years. Then I went to Canada, played a couple years, and I came back here with the Predators. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up here. And I, from, from the Predators, uh, they knew people in the sheriff's office. I say I would like to be a deputy. They said, we can set you up. I sat down and had a meeting or two, and – Got in the academy, and boom, I've been there ever since. So how did you end up as a PAL deputy? Uh, me being a PAL deputy started when I was probably 10 or 11 years old because an officer in, in Tampa used to come and pick me up and take me to a PAL program, when, like I say, 10 or 11 years old. And, and I saw the difference he made and, and what it did for me. Mm. So my whole time before I even became a deputy, I knew that's something that I wanted to do. And I got lucky and, and got it so you know i'm living the dream basically and so when that came up and you said 2003 or so when, when you 2004 became, yes and when you became a pal deputy you were like i want to do that uh-huh okay oh yeah most definitely and you've been and, doing that ever since and that's where i feel like i make the difference and so sean you have a little bit of a similar story did, did you grow up playing sports as well and and, and that's how you kind of got into pal right yes yes um i grew up playing sports and how it kind of all started um i went to evans high school end up graduating graduating from a private school, left, went off to East Tennessee to uh, play basketball. And um, when I came back, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So I applied for the sheriff's office. And to be totally honest with you, we did have PAL at my middle school. 
Um, but and yes, he was my pal deputy. Really, Maurice he was, was your with, pal deputy. Maurice was my pal deputy. And how was he back then? He was the same. He was the same. <laughs> he was the same. Um, and so, to be quite honest, I didn't quite put two and two together to where I was like, I want to go to the sheriff's office and I want to be a pal deputy. Mm -hmm. I did not have those dreams at all. Um, I was in SRO and then the position came open um, because, you know, I put in for it and I was just like, this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is it. Because there's not many pal deputies. No, it's only four of us. Okay. So and I got two in this room, so I got half the staff You got half right of the staff right here. <laughs> so that's how it came about. And um, I don't think I'm going anywhere else. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when did you become a pal deputy? I became two years ago. Okay, so not two that long. Two years ago, so I'm fresh. All right. I'm fresh. What have you learned in those two years? Oh, man. Um... I learned that I really enjoy kids. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy mentoring them. I really enjoy, you know, seeing a smile on their face in a different way. I was in the schools, so I was able to interact with them in the schools. But sports is just a little different. You're able to see a different side of them. You're able to see them mad and mm -hmm. angry and sad and happy. And so you get to see all facets of them. And I'm just I, I really enjoy that. So, Maurice, I think I first met you because I, I shot a video and you mm -hmm. were doing basketball at, at a school, I think on the Avalon Middle School. Avalon, Avalon Middle yeah. School. So, so you and uh, Sean, you mentioned football, but tell me about the basketball program. Is that more popular than the football or is it is the football more popular? Uh, you know what? I think they're about equal. Hmm. Uh, some schools have more football players compelled to, com compared to basketball, but overall, I think it's about even. The numbers are fairly close and i think there was a guy helping you when i was out there too and he wasn't a deputy he i think he worked at the school yes okay yes, is that normally, pretty normal that yes, you get we normally try to get a coach or teacher or someone at the school to actually help us out and that way if it's a problem with a kid in the daytime he said coach i can't make it or we need someone to pick up a form or if a parent come out and want to pick up a kid and you know they tell the coach you my kid's going to be gone for the day. We generally use him just to communicate and also coach as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also when I was there, it was the morning. And so sometimes the pals in the afternoon, but this one particular mm -hmm. at this, this middle school was in the morning. And it wasn't just like playing basketball. There was a lot of, uh, I mean, I know you had snacks there and you mm -hmm. had drinks and all that. I mean, talk about that. I mean, that that's important as well. Oh, yeah, most definitely because a, a lot of kids, they don't get a chance to eat breakfast like in that situation, it was in the morning. So we'll generally have a little snack for them. And then after school, the same time, I mean, some kids, they don't go home and have a great dinner. Mm -hmm. So we'll have snacks for them from there as well. So, Sean, I was a teenager one time. Mm -hmm. I was a good teenager, though. Okay. <laughs> you okay. can ask my parents. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. But sure, I'm, sure. I'm sure all these, these kids are not always uh, on their best behavior. I mean, mm -hmm. they're teenagers. And so right. like, how do you deal with that as both, you know, coach, mentor, ref, but also – uh, a deputy too. I mean, I mean, right. how, how do you deal with that? I just think that every every situation is a teaching moment, mm -hmm. and I try to take that approach. I don't take it personal because, like you said, I was once that kid as well, and so I kind of understand what they're going through. And a lot of times, we don't know what they're going to through. They could be going home to like an abusive household or to a home where they're not eating. So I try to take that into account and use it as a teaching moment. Bring them away from their peers, and that's our time to mentor them and talk to them and make them feel comfortable. What What do you like about what you do so far? Because uh, I know I know you like I said you've done it two years. You've done it ten years. Yeah. Or so. <laughs> I mean, what do you like so far? Um, I just like, I, I love the team that I work with first and foremost. Um, but really just interacting with the kids, mm -hmm. really interacting with the kids and, and they talk a lot of noise to me talk a lot of mess. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I'm a division one basketball player and talking junk is like a different language. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to like communicate in that way. And, um, yeah, you know, they're able to feel comfortable talking to a deputy yeah. because I wasn't comfortable talking to a deputy growing up until I had pal. So I like to see the transition. And so Maurice, I mean, you've done, like I said, you've done this a while. I mean, have you seen the benefits of kids that have even grown up? Because I mean, you've, you've been doing it so long that, I mean, when they were in middle school, I mean, they've graduated high school now. Do they ever come back and talk to you and say, you know, you did a, you did a great thing for oh, me. Oh man. I've seen the full circle. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's been rewarding for me. Definitely. Um, 
and I've seen some of those bad situations, the good situations. Um, a lot of kids have gone to college. Some kids are even playing professional sports, mm -hmm. and it's just rewarding for me. Um, and you see kids come back with families, um, and like I said, I've been to in Pal for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and I see kids at movie theaters, grocery stores, and some of them are managers, you know, and, and their kids are working, all the kind of stuff. And they'll say, oh, man, he was my pal coach. As a matter of fact, last night I played basketball with a guy at a, at a gym I went to for the first time, and he was telling all the other players in there, it's like, he was my pal coach, you know, <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, so I'm still out there running around and trying to stay in shape, and it's just – rewarding to see the positives and tell me the things that it did for them, keeping them off the streets, not getting in trouble, uh, and seeing the deputies in a different light. I, I said earlier, you've been doing this 10 years. I forget it's 2023. You've oh, been yeah, doing so this 20 years. Almost 20 years. It's been a long <laughs> I, I forget, time. I forget what year it is sometime. <laughs> so, so, I mean, uh, what do you think the kids get out of this? Um, I I just think the kids get get a different experience from police officers, because generally when they see the cops, everyone thinks trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they see us in a different light, like for instance, yesterday, we're sitting there waiting, you know, the uh, a teacher was out on the field trying to get his kids to do stuff, mm -hmm. and Sean, like she said, a little trash talking to a kid. It was like, you gonna play pal today? Or we gonna see what you got? You know, and they came over and start talking to us, but the teacher was like, Hey, guys, come over here. Y'all don't even talk to me like that. you just talking to them. But, you know, the teachers use that also, you know, to keep the kids out of trouble and say, okay, well, if you don't do your work this day and time, you ain't going to be playing pal. Mm -hmm. So we help them out with that as well. So it works both ways. Is, is it once a week or is it every day? Like, when do the kids play? Monday through Friday. Okay. So each school plays once a week, though. Okay. All right. But we're we're Monday through Friday. Um. So yeah, we once a week. Every everybody has a day. Every school has a day. And I assume the kids look forward to it. At least some of oh, them they do. Look forward and so to it. and so it keeps them. I, I don't want to say this is the only way I can say it. Like it keeps them in line because you can probably say, look, if you're going to act like that, you can't play next week. You can't play next Absolutely. month. Absolutely, it gives them an incentive to to be better and try to do better because you know a lot of them are a product of their environment. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just doing what they see. And so if you get them an incentive, they really want to do something. You, okay, if you really want to do it, then I'm going to need X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how it works. So uh, about a month ago, I think there was a, a flag football, football like, all-star awesome. game. That, that was at Gotha, right? Correct. Right, right, right. And, and, and tell me about that. That was, like, uh, schools from all over the district came and played there? Right. Yes, we, we come up with an um, all-star game where, like you say, it's schools from different parts of the county where they meet and we'll have this all-star game, a double elimination tournament, and the best team win, we get in, anywhere from 12 to 15 kids per school. And in that situation, which it was a smaller tournament, we just had five uh, five teams. Um, they come out, compete, and see who wins. Uh, the school that actually won this year was West Ridge. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those kids, they had never been to that side of town, which was Gotha. And there was an awe of seeing a different area, different school, uh, different kids, uh, seeing the different sizes, heights of kids. And, I mean, it's a it's a big difference when they see different parts of town that they've never been to. And the parents were very much appreciative. They were excited. Oh, yeah. yeah. Parents were excited. And, and that was another excited. plus. I mean, just hoping that, you know, we continue this because was, this was our first year at Gotha. Yeah. So, you know, it's just something new for them. And, We'll be back there again. And all of that takes a lot of planning, too. Like you said, like all these schools are all around the county. Orange County is a huge county. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a tournament at Gotha, you have to think about, you know, getting kids there and, and having food and having refs and having stands and having medics and all that. That takes a lot of planning. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And that's what we all try to get to do and bring it all together. And like you said, it's a lot of planning. But like you said, it's a great staff. We all and it's together, and we just look forward to doing it. We don't mind spending the time doing that because it's for the kids, and that's what we like to do. You also said that, you know, for these kids to play, it's, it's like $5, $10, but if they can't pay it, there's a way no to we, we figure that out. Like, like how how is this funded? How, how does Orange County PAL get funding? We have a board here in, in Orange County. It's a large board, and they get donations. We get grants, things of that nature uh, for us to be able to do the things that we do like to get the food and things like that. Um, Walmart for the last tournament, they they donated it was just chicken, uh, yeah, all kinds salad, of stuff, all yeah. Kind oh, yeah, of food, good drinks. Food, good uh, food. It was some good food, and the kids really, really enjoyed it. And we let them take it all home mm. afterwards. Whoever want to make a 
extra plate, they can have it. But Parents that's how Pat gets to, to work. Yes, yeah. we everyone, had so we much food. Feed everyone. I think I saw some trophies there too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The kids enjoyed a trophy. Yeah. That's another thing. Uh, and we've created a, a trophy where whoever wins the tournament takes it to the school for the until the next tournament so they get the bragging rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask about, be, because you're both deputies and, and you're working with kids, I'm sure most of it's about sports, but but also, do you ever get situations where somebody says, you know what, um, you know, something's happening in my neighborhood, I, can somebody check it out? Or, or, or like, do kids talk to you and tell you about things that are going on that maybe they wouldn't talk to you about because you're not there every day with them? Yes, that definitely has happened quite a few times. Mm -hmm. I've seen it a ton of times where and maybe this big fight's supposed to happen out the school or, you know, when a certain kid ain't there, we say, where's Johnny? It's like, oh, coach, it's supposed to be a fight down the street. Johnny's supposed to be there. We can call a SRO at the school, say, hey, it's supposed to be a fight around the corner on whatever street because you mm -hmm. go over there and check it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times we get there before the thing, event actually happens just because that kid told us something that might have been going on. So it's been a huge help as far as that as well. So, Sean, uh, when, when you said you played college basketball, mm -hmm. do you play basketball? Like, when there's basketball uh, for PAL, do you go out there and, like, show, oh, show them absolutely. how to? Okay. Like, like, you're, like you said, coach and teacher and all that. Absolutely. Like I said, our kids, they're very competitive, mm -hmm. very, very competitive. So, they call me out. Yeah. And um, I, some, I can't say no sometimes. I can't <laughs> say no. So, you know, we'll play two-on-two, two, three on three after PAL is over. But that just really allows me to build that relationship with yeah. them. And um, it's a lot of fun. Do you think they underestimate you at first? Oh, yes, they do. Oh, they all Oh, yes, them. they do. All the time. And they look just, at me up and down. Them, like, put the ball right there. <laughs> <laughs> they look at me up and down and talk so much stuff. But mm -hmm. I love it. I I really do. I really love it. Gives me a chance to get these knees warmed up <laughs> and, <laughs> and show them what I got a little bit. So, like, looking ahead, as you said, you play football, you play soccer, you play basketball. Is, is there any sort of plans to expand that, or is it just sort of concentrating on those three sports, or is there plans to expand it to other schools? We would like to. It's just right now it's only four of us, mm. uh, so it gets difficult, and we still have our – police duties as well that we have to do because each each one of us have to go to a school once a week and be a SRO. So there's still a lot of the things that we have to do. So like it takes a lot of planning and time and coordination to be able to do it all. And we hope to expand. Um, Captain is trying to get us a, another person or two. Whether or not that ever happens or not, I don't know. I know when I started, it was only two, and it's four of us now. <laughs> so <laughs> we're double making that. strides, right? <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, hopefully we get a chance to like, expand. Uh, and like I said, we did do baseball back in the days, and we see some things work, some things do work, some of them don't. So we'll keep trying other things as, you know, the years come along. Yeah, well, we do add schools, though. We do add schools while each season we try to add a different school and, and bring programs to their uh, school. Like for this, this season – I had the SRO um, get in contact with me and said, can y'all please come to Lockhart? Mm. Can you please come to Lockhart? We need y'all. And so we definitely made it our duty to get over there, and we're there now. We're there now. And that, I was going to ask that. Like, if, if I was a school, if I was a principal, like, how does it work? Do they just reach out to you and say, we would love to have this at our school? Or is it more the SROs that sort of reach out to you? Either or. Mm. Either or. The principals get in contact with the SROs because obviously the SROs are deputies as well. And it's it's a quicker, quicker uh, line of communication. So um, that's what typically happens. All right, Maurice, so when I was out at Avalon Middle School, I noticed it was it was mostly boys, if not all boys, playing basketball. It is – is Orange County Pal mostly boys playing? And if so, like, how, how do you get more girls interested in playing sports? I'll, I'll, both, I'll ask both of you this. Absolutely. Everything is co-ed. Mm -hmm. I think that school at Avalon, we had maybe four girls. Mm. Um, they were from the basketball team. Um, but everything is co-ed, so girls are allowed to play flag football and basketball, soccer, whatever. And we do get one or two girls here and there. Um, but now we're in the process of trying to expand to an all-girls league uh, we had a meeting last week uh, with another coach and someone from the city to actually expand the leagues just to have an all-girls basketball league to ah. get their numbers up. So uh, females will be included a lot more than what they were in the past. Okay. All right. But I also I would like to um, 
elaborate a little bit on that's where me and the other female pal deputy come in at because then when we go to these schools and we're at their lunches you see a lot of females that may want to try to play but really don't have that confidence and that's where we come and say hey I'm going to be out there you can do this girls play too um, and try to encourage them to come out and which is really helped because we we starting to see a lot of a lot more females come out and play these sports as well and they're good too <laughs> well, They're good I, mean, too. I mean, but that's an important point. They they see you uh-huh. and they say, "Well, if she she play, right. she's playing. She's going to be there. She might have my back if I'm not as good as maybe these boys, or maybe I am better than them." Right. right. And and but she's going to be there, and and I can look up to her. Absolutely, and that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. And so, so you also you also have a, a mentor program maybe in the works. Yes. Yeah, so we're trying to uh, um, expand Pal to the kids that do not play sports. There are a lot of kids out here that don't play sports but want to have interaction with deputies and and things like that. And that's where our mentorship will come into play. Um, and and pretty much it just gives them an opportunity. It, we're still in the works with it, still in the beginning stages of, of getting planned, but that's our goal mm-hmm. is to go into these different schools and mentor kids and have them interact with us and, and possibly try to do like some um, – financial literacy classes to teach them things and try to get them on a straight and narrow, even mm-hmm. though that they, they don't play sports. Mm-hmm. So could you talk about the uh, event that we had this weekend? I wasn't here, but she was. At oh, absolutely. We so we had an event um, this Saturday at Barnett Park. This was our first event. We had some very influential speakers come out um, and we had a bunch of kids to, to sit down and listen to them. They were kind of like motivational speakers, but it also allowed us to, impact kids um, that do not play sports you know there was a lot of kids there that didn't play sports there was a little girl that was out there who had dreams of being a pharmacist and one of our speakers she owned a pharmacy and so she came out there and uh, was asking her questions and really was inspired Um, she even drove her Bentley to, oh, nice. to the event. <laughs> all she right. drove her Bentley to the event and all the kids were like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. that's a Bentley. I've never seen it before. Mm. But it was so amazing to see them say, you know what? I'm going to drive that one day. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm going to do this one day. And they were so inspired. But that's something that Pal is trying to do to inspire kids, to, to give them motivation and let them know like, hey, I can do it too. Yeah. And I think that's super important because like, you know, I, I like playing sports. I'm not I'm probably not as good as both of you <laughs> but like I like playing right. but I know not every kid is great at sports not every kid wants to play sports Absolutely. but there's a lot of other avenues that you can sort of like you said have a mentor in or, mm-hmm. or learn about even if you don't want to play basketball or soccer or mm-hmm. flag football right right and I, I love it man just being able to see those kids um, be at all mm-hmm. to see those cars and to to ask these these uh, speakers like do you live in a mansion <laughs> one of the kids asked do you live in a mansion oh my gosh mm-hmm. and you know it's just really good really good to see all yeah. right well I want to thank both of you for what you do. I know it, it, it can't be easy some days, probably wrangling, you know, 50 <laughs> kids to play flag football and also teach them the rules of football on the fly. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. And if anybody's interested in Orange County Pal, I, I know they can go to OCSO.com. I'm sure there's information on there. Or just Google Orange County Pal. You can find all the info on there. And, and what if somebody it. wanted to come watch, like, a, a, a game? Do they just sort of – Follow them on Facebook, or how would somebody find? We do have an Instagram page. Okay. It's right. O C S O underscore Pal. Okay. On Instagram, Facebook is not cr- pretty active right now, so our Instagram will be more active, and you'll be able to see our future events and see some pictures of the kids and things of that nature. So everyone, follow our Instagram page. We'll really appreciate it. All right. Well, Deputy Sean Randall, Deputy Maurice Crum, thank you so much for being on Behind the Star. Appreciate thank you. It was great. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Behind the Star. You can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, I'm John Bustecker, and this is Behind the Star. Behind the Star.